Our next speaker uh, from the All Stars team tonight is um, Antonella Cavallo, who um, is uh, a PhD student here at the University of Adelaide and uh, a face that many of you will know. Antonella uh, commenced her studies uh, and work in uh, countries including Italy, Germany, France and the US. So she's well travelled. Um, and I was going to say something funny, but I can't think of anything. Um, clearly she can't stay anywhere, they keep moving her on. Um, but um, Antonella has a background in business engineering. Her passion for complexity theories and risk management has resulted in a book that I've handed around a good deal called uh, Risk Management in Complex Projects. You can still get hold of that uh, small paperback text, um, which uh, we've used in some of the education at the Torrance Institute. Um, the passion for complexity, sorry, complexity translates into some of those issues that concern us most. The black swan events, the events that are either considered to be um, extremely unlikely but of high consequence or just not thought about. So Antonella's uh, conversation about complexity is particularly uh, useful, I think, for this audience. Thanks, Antonella. Welcome. Can you hear me fine? Yeah. Welcome again also from me. Um, I'm going to talk today about the research project that um, I am, I'm leading and um, uh, for which the Commonwealth Government, which the Commonwealth Government is funded until <coughs> the end of 2013, but which uh, will hopefully also be part of my PhD. So I'm going to talk about uh, complexity and I'm going to talk about community resilience and how these two ideas relate to, uh, to each other. Um, I started getting, I, I got interested in risk management um, while I was studying in Germany. I was writing a paper about risk communication um, in the San Francisco Bay and uh, a major earthquake struck in Italy, in my home country, and killed over 300 people. The stories which uh, came out of, um, of uh, the tragedy, of the disaster, were horrible and made me realize um, how much could have been uh, done to, to help those people. Like some of, many of the, of the people injured were just um, surprised by collapsing buildings which had been restored just a couple of years before. Other people didn't know at all the basic rules of dropping, covering and Holding on, holding on until the, the earthquake uh, would have gone by. So I, I was overwhelmed. Why didn't these people know, didn't have any contact with disaster preparedness? What could have been done? But what I realized at the time was also that if some of them didn't know the basic rules that, uh, you know, like, uh, how to behave in the case of a disaster, even though they clearly are in a seismic area that, that was well known even before the earthquake. There was something more complex than that behind. And a couple of days ago, you might have seen that four people went to jail for this. There is corruption. There, are, there were buildings which had been restored only a couple of years before the earthquake struck, and that collapsed, uh, a hospital particularly. So while there are some complicated, some complicated risks, as I call them, um, which are the ones that, um, that are complicated at the beginning. We might not have the whole information to deal with them, but we still have the resources before, before a disaster occurs to manage them very uh, specifically. There are complex risks, risks which are more systemic, which are in the system, which is, for example, corruption uh, or um, uh, the, uh, uh, the lack of confidence, for example, of a building company to, uh, 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 to restore uh, a building. So there is a difference between complicated and complex. These are two words that normally we use as synonyms, but um, it, for what I'm doing, it's is really important uh, to understand the semantic difference. So um, in complex systems, uh, at the beginning, we might not have the information, but we won't have it. We won't understand the relationship between cause and effect until after a disaster occurs. Um, think about World Trade Center and even the, uh, the tsunami in 2004. 
you might say that there were, in the, in the case of the tsunami in 2004, there were warning systems in place. However, we can say that now, we can say today, but at the time, all those people who lost their lives, and, and many more people, they didn't know, where, they, were, um, they were surprised by the, by the disaster. So we need different approaches for complicated risks and for complex risks. For complicated risks, we can uh, use our disaster preparedness strategies. We can be very specific about what, how to prepare the population for those risks. But we can't do the same to build resilience in a community. There is no recipe sol solution, there is no recipe approach that we can use to build resilience in a community. And that's why it is important to use a systemic approach. So while in complicated uh, systems we can sense and respond directly, in complex systems we have to try, see how it, our approach is working, and then adjust our approach depending on the feedback that we have from that system, depending on the feedback, for example, that we have from that community. So this is uh, just to say, like, um, I think that I've made it clear that in disasters there is always a portion of risks that we are able to foresee and a portion of risk which is unforeseen, which is what uh, is an unexpected in a disaster. So we have disaster preparedness, complicated risks, and disaster resilience, complex risks. These two have to be integrated with each other. We need both. Uh, none of those is better than the other. We need both. We need a specific approach and a systemic one at the same time to increase the safety of the population. Also, or res resilience is, a, uh, is an approach which needs to be holistic, not just in, terms, in geographic terms, but also in terms of time. We need to think about the history of, uh, of the community, for example, but also of the development in time that that community is going to go through. Uh, through. So disaster preparedness. In disaster preparedness, we can assume that if we have a big system, if we have a big problem, we can break it down into packages and ultimately the sum, the sum of those packages will give the solution to the whole. In complex systems, we can't assume that. While in complicated, we can break it down. Um, in complex systems, a French, um, a French philosopher, a French uh, professor used to say that complexity is the science of connection. So while in the complicated case, we can break it down, in complex systems, we have to put all those systems together, be aware of the interdependencies uh, across different systems. So what is community resilience in this sense? Community resilience becomes then the existence, development and engagement of community resources by community members to face unpredictability, change, surprise and uncertainty. So you can understand why a resilient community needs to be well connected. Is a resilient community is well connected. This is a draft of the, of the systems of systems which we might uh, imagine here in Australia. Um, it's, it's, very, it's really a draft and uh, it is not meant to be accurate. However, I would like to um, refer to the fact that uh, even systems, we are used to think about disaster management systems as um, government, uh, SES, CFS, MFS, etc., etc., Australian Red Cross, but actually, there are many more systems which are uh, independent, but at the same time interdependent from these systems. And these are, can be even churches, neighborhoods, um, and other NGOs, which are not directly connected with the, with the, with the usual normal, um, with the usual emergency management channels. And this is a slide which shows a little bit what I'm going to do uh, during the next month. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to start um, running focus groups uh, with the, um, in the community of uh, Onkaparinga, in the Council of Onkaparinga. We're going to talk to people who are in uh, community groups and we're going to ask them questions about connectivity and unpredictability. And then we're going to talk to the Council and, and afterwards to the Australian Red Cross, which is probably the biggest organization in South Australia, which is um, um, which deals with bu building disaster resilience and which is between the government and the community itself. So it's, 
it's really a, um, a very important stakeholder in this project. And afterwards, I'm going to involve all the hazard leaders in this discussion, and we are going to uh, work together um, at, like, on the basis of the of the of the outcomes of the findings from the the first uh, focus groups. This is meant, as you can see, it's a bottom-up approach. What I realized in Italy is that there were standards in place. And also in Fukushima, if you think about Fukushima, the Fukushima disasters, there were standards in place. But they were not respected. So it means that they were not really tailored for the social context in which those standards uh, would have been used. So what I'm trying to do is to have, first of all, a feedback from the community and then to, uh, to work uh, at a governmental level on the, to, uh, to build resilience then in those communities. Finally, this is my final slide, I would like to, um, um, to uh, present you the, the three research questions that uh, I'll try to answer. So the first one is, how can the application of complexity theories contribute to building community resilience? What does a disaster resilience system of systems, in the case of the city of Onkaparinga, look like? And which framework can be formulated by hazard leaders to address the requirements of such a system of systems? Thank you very much. Thanks, Antonella. We will um, now move toward the panel session. Um, that last uh, uh, few slides and uh, points made by Antonella, I think, are particularly important when you start to think about the articulation or unpicking the understanding of the National Strategy for Disaster Resilience, which started us off in this country, I suppose, or at least drew a line, um, a starting line for us to uh, uh, start to think about how we change the system. Now, Antonella's conversation about uh, complicated versus complex about preparedness <coughs> excuse me, versus resilience, um, that's the kind of unpicking that I think we now need to see happen more and, uh, and try and engage with. So a really interesting talk, I think.